Yo, what is up? It's your boy. Um, I'm here once again to consolidate some thoughts into this motherfucking camera. Uh, I got my coconut mocha macchiato here from this little place called Starbucks. Um, it's a pretty cool place that you might want to check out. I feel like it has a subculture to it that might get big someday and I want to kind of represent it before it becomes a cool thing. All right, what's up guys? Um, welcome to our vlog. Um, this is a vlog and it's being posted today and I'm telling you random useless information but I promise the rest of the vlog won't be like that. So, um, I actually have a lot of things to talk about but this video isn't going to be talking about any of those things. Um, I don't know why but I have a lot of vlogs that I want to make in my mind and they're about pretty cool topics. But this is uh, another kind of freeform video and so um, I just want to talk about movies and this is something that I've done before. I made a vlog a while back uh, last year about movies that I was looking forward to and I actually don't think I've seen a lot of the movies that I've mentioned in that uh, video because I I really don't uh, prioritize watching movies that much um, in my free time even though I have a long list and I love movies so much. I watch my favorite ones like I follow certain directors like uh, Quentin Tarantino and Paul Thomas Anderson and uh, oh fuck I'm blanking Martin Scorsese and stuff like that um, but in terms of just like having fun with them and shit I don't do that too much but um, it's different this time around, um, this period of time, because in the past like two or three months, I've actually watched way more movies than I usually do. So I'm just gonna talk about the movies that I've seen, uh, kind of do a mini review of them, and um, yeah. So I think the first recent movie that I watched was um, Neighbors 2. Uh, I'm trying to think of the subtitle, I think it's Sorority Uprising or something like that. I liked it. <laughs> Another movie that I watched was um, The Mermaid, which is uh, directed by Stephen Chow, which is uh, who is a really cool guy. Um, you'll probably know him most from uh, Kung Fu Hustle, which is one of the coolest movies ever. That motherfucker came out in 2006, man, and just hit the Western market, and peeps was crazy about that shit. I was crazy about that shit, still crazy for that shit. I am waiting for the sequel to that movie, and um, yeah, really anticipated, um, anticipating that movie, and like, Stephen Chow's releases in general, but I don't really have um, very strong feelings for The Mermaid. Uh, the last movie I watched by Stephen Chow was um, Journey to the West, which is really cool in terms of just being able to see fantasy come to life. Um, this new movie of his actually broke box office records. It's like the best selling movie in China right now, I think. Um, but I think it's one of his worst movies. Uh, I've seen like four of his movies. Four or five of his movies, I actually haven't watched that much of his filmography, but I think like four out of those five, or like 90% of those, the storyline is generally the same. It's about this protagonist dude who learns how to be a good person or how to love from a female character who um, like almost experiences death. And uh, yeah, The Mermaid's like the worst one out of all of his movies I've seen, I think, even though it's the best selling. Um, it's, I don't remember any of the actual critique that I had of it because I watched it a while ago, crap. It's got really bad CGI, I guess? Uh, I don't know, let me try to give a summary or something. It's about this really rich dude who um, put these freaking sonar devices out in the ocean to like drive away um, like the sea life there or whatever so he could expand his business or some shit. But then in this world, mermaids exist and mermaids live in that area that he's kind of fucking over so they make this plan to kill him and they do so by having like the pretty mermaid in their little group of survivors left to go um, make him fall for her kind of so that she can get into a safe zone and then she can kill him and then she ends up falling in love with him and he ends up falling in love with her and then he's like okay I'm a good guy now but then he's already in the mix of all this like bad corporate shit so all of the other people are like okay this guy's fuck him we'll do it ourselves and then they try to kill the mermaids and uh, he almost dies trying to save them, even though a lot of them die, which is really crazy because in the movie it kind of has like a family tone to it, environmental friendly tone, but then a lot of mermaids actually die in the movie, like almost all of them except for one basically, <laughs> almost. They, a lot of them die, sorry spoiler alert, mermaids die, uh, then in the end he's like, um, He's kind of away from the public eye and he's living with his mermaid girlfriend and then there's like this reporter that visits his house and he's like, oh, I'm also an aspiring thing of a Jew. <laughs> so yeah, Steven's Child the Mermaid, um, it's doing really well in theaters, or it did, it made a bunch of money. 
Um, it has a good heart to it. Um, a lot of the comedic bits are uh, pretty amusing. Just, n just never on any levels. It never matches Stephen Child's best uh, work. I'm not even sure if I've seen his best work because I've only seen a couple of his films. But if those films that I saw aren't his best work, then this film definitely doesn't even reach to his like almost best work level, I guess. All right, next up, uh, what did I watch? Oh, I watched um, a movie that I've been waiting to watch. It's been on my watch list for a while. It's like one of those like films that you know it's gonna be good so you don't watch it right away because you feel like it's so good that you have to get into the right mood for it and that movie was Slow West. It came out last year. It might have been in that list of videos that I listed um, in that vlog about the movies I was looking forward to watching. It's um, a western and 2015 was a crazy year for westerns. It had um, Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight, it had The Revenant, it had Slow West, it had Bone Tomahawk, it had a bunch of other stuff. And it was a really cool year for westerns. I don't think I've seen all of them yet, so I'm looking forward to watching. Um, but yeah, Slow West is a really cool western. I really like it. Um, if I were to describe it, it's kind of like if a pretty gritty western where people are gonna die meets a Wes Anderson style of storytelling. And like in words, that sounds like a pretty weird concept. It feels like that would not turn out to be a good product, but it was. Uh, Slow West is a really cool film, and it's actually pretty short for the amount of kind of profound impact that it has in its story. I think it's like one hour and 20 minutes, which is pretty darn short. It's like as short as like a movie based off a cartoon show, like the SpongeBob movie, that's it's like the same length. But it tells a good story, I think, and it tells it pretty smoothly and stylistically um, to the point where you're going, wow, that was a really enjoyable experience. So I'll try to give a review of this that isn't as spoilerish as the one that I gave for The Mermaid. Um, basically, there's just this kid who um, travels westward. He's not from America. He travels to America because he's following after the girl that he has a crush on who also went to America and was where he was from. Um, and the reasons why she did that is kind of unknown, so he goes after her, and uh, then he like is a little kid, or he's not a little kid, but he's a teenager. He's a young man who would die alone, so he almost does die alone uh, until he meets the guy who Michael Fassbender plays, which is like this really experienced, um, knowledge cowboy-like dude, and he agrees to take the kid to where he wants to go, his crush, um, if he pays him the money, um, and yeah, they uh, go on the journey together and then they face threats and stuff until they reach the place. And so it's a really cool film. It has a simple storyline, but um, it's artful in that it kind of analyzes the relationships um, of the characters. Uh, the guy that Michael Fassbender plays has an ulterior motive to just getting money uh, from this random kid. I mean, why wouldn't he just kill the kid and steal his money? This is the Wild Wild West, yo. We don't fuck around. You just do that. Um, but there's a reason why he's not, and I don't want to spoil it, so I won't state it explicitly, but yeah, so he's forced to go on this journey with this kid if he wants to get what he wants, and along the way, uh, their relationship ex explored, their dynamic is explored, and uh, yeah. It's kind of artsy in that sense, but it retains um, pretty cool uh, tropes of western movies too, like uh, shootout and uh, people dying and uh, people talking and all cool like, yo. So yeah, Slow West is uh, a good movie. Uh, it's one of the best movies I've watched recently. If I were to rate it, I would give it like a B plus, um, somewhere around like an 87 out of 100 and uh, that means recommended, uh, unlike the previous movie I talked about. Another movie that I watched recently was Captain America Civil War. So um, this is a movie that I actually would have been willing to pay a ticket at the theaters um, to watch, but I didn't just because of unavailability to go. Um, I ended up going to the theaters to watch The Nice Guys, um, and that came out around the same time as Captain America, but we, I tried to do a double feature and watch both of them, but the timing didn't work out, so I never watched Captain America Civil War until recently. The nice Guys is better in my opinion, but Civil War is a pretty darn good movie. I like it. It's one of the best Marvel movies I've um, seen. Um, just to give you a gauging of what my favorites or what I consider the best Marvel movies to be, I really like um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, uh, I guess like one of the Iron Man movies and uh, I'm blanking here. <laughs> Shoot, is that it? No, there has to be another one. Another one is pretty good. 
I guess those are the only ones I really feel were great. I kind of like Ant-Man in terms of just viewing it as a comedy and not a superhero film. Um, I guess I'll tell you the ones I didn't like too, just to give you a feeling of my taste in Marvel movies. I didn't like the first two Captain America movies, um, but I really like this third one for some reason, um, even though they were all written by the same people. Um, I don't really like the Thor movies that much. I like the Iron Man movies in general. Um, and are there other Marvel movies? No, I guess not. Um, in terms of superhero films though, I really like X-Men First Class. That's like one of the best superhero movies. And um, I guess that's it. I really don't like any of the other X-Men to be honest. And of course, the one that deserves the most mention is um, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight series. That's like the best uh, superhero film slash films that I have ever seen. Um, and last, one last little side mention, the best the best superhero origin movie I have ever seen is Django Unchained. That is the best superhero origin movie ya been told. And if you didn't know, now you know. Okay, so back to Civil War. I really liked it. I enjoyed it more. Um, of course, a lot of people call it um, basically an Avengers movie and not a Captain America movie, which pretty, for the most part, I agree. I like it more than both of the Avengers movies that have come out. I like the cast. Um, it feels like everyone had a part, kind of. It was really fun. Um, the action was actually kind of, um, it didn't come up to par with Avengers movies in terms of like crazy um, places to fight with special effects and stuff like that, but it was still cool enough. The airport scene was admittedly um, pretty darn fun. But beyond that, I feel like it was just told in a smarter way. Like it, they kind of upped the ante in terms of um, how superhero movies are allowed, how like profound and poignant and whatnot uh, they're allowed to be. I felt like this one was really pretty good. One of the reasons I really like um, X-Men First Class is because I feel like that one had a really cool story in terms of Magneto's uh, revenge on whoever the motherfucker Kevin Bacon played and then at the end when he freaking does that shit where he fucking does the shit with the coin through the dude's fucking skull, that was badass. That's one of the coolest parts of the film and that's one of my favorite parts of the film. Um, and it's part of the film's, I feel, good writing. Uh, another part is Eric's relationship with um, Charles and like the whole drama that they go through and how he loses his legs and shit like that. That was good, um, compelling storytelling. And now in retrospect, after saying that, I feel like uh, Civil War probably doesn't actually match up to that, but it does pretty close, so maybe it doesn't up the ante so much, um, but it does up the ante for, I guess, Marvel films because Civil War is pretty darn poignant. Um, I like the Black Panther um, story, how that comes to a close. I like the dynamic between Kevin America and Iron Man. I just feel like it's a little bit too rushed. What I did like was how the film was basically still centered on um what the fuck the motherfucking Bucky Barnes motherfucker <laughs> I really liked Bucky Barnes when he was first introduced into the series um when he was um in Civil in Captain America 1 but I hate how he turned out he's like not even a character to me anymore he's just a plot device um he's never even in Civil War I feel like he doesn't show any character at one point he goes, okay, maybe I'm not worth it, but I mean like shit dude, you should have felt that way like a long time ago and maybe develop some more kind of feelings and dynamicness to your character. Um, and then maybe I would have liked you, but you're just basically a plot device. And I hate that that plot device is apparently large enough to um, instigate an arc called Civil War. Because when you hear Civil War, you're um, imagining some crazy blown out um, storyline and not something that just derives off this dude uh, still liking his old best friend. Like Civil War should be like way more people's um, conflicting opinions than just Iron Man and Captain America, in which a lot of that is very heavily influenced by um, their very personal relationship with um, a select person, like uh, Captain America's relationship with Bucky, and then Iron Man's um, epiphany of what, or discovery of what happened to his parents or whatever. So yeah, it's not the perfect movie, of course, um, but I feel like it um, is pretty profound, more profound than like superhero movies um, have a right to be as far as what they've established themselves to be uh, with all the movies so far. So yeah, it was a really enjoyable movie. Um, I don't think it has any rewatch value for me, uh, but I still enjoyed it first time through. So if I had to rate uh, Captain America Civil War, I'd probably give it around like an a B average, 84, 85 out of 100, um, yeah. Really looking forward to Infinity War though. That's what's up, I really am psyched for that. Um, I'm really hoping that it's gonna be good and it isn't too, um, 
condensed. I don't know how to express it, but like one of the biggest disappointments for me in, super ter in terms of superhero movies is how they really hype you up in terms of just concept and like even the subtitles like Civil War and um, another movie that I had a problem was, was with was X-Men Days of Future Past which I was like hella psyched for just because of the concept of like time travel and shit but then when I actually watched those movies like no it wasn't that grand a narrative like Days of Future Past was so lame they went back in time for like the stupidest reason like you literally could have just wrote that plot in without using time travel and it would have been just as interesting if not more so because you didn't have to obsess over time travel elements and you could have made a better story um but if you were going to use time travel you should have done it for something way better than that like days of future past is lame um and civil war again like i said earlier it's not as grand as the subtitle makes you think um but in case in the case of civil war i still enjoyed it uh, overall but yeah looking forward to infinity war i'm also looking forward to doctor strange because it's a different kind of superhero movie i really like um the occult yo so i'm looking forward to that not looking forward to spider-man homecoming too much i think i might almost pass on it um looking forward to the new guardians of the galaxy and um uh, if there's any other Marvel movie, oh Black Panther, looking forward to that too actually. So um, yeah, looking forward to Marvel movies for the most part, um, and psyched for Infinity War. Alright, so uh, let's talk about the last movie I think is worth mentioning. Um, recently, the last one that I watched too is um, Skip Trace, which is basically the latest movie that stars Jackie Chan. Yo, my guy. That was ridiculous, I don't think he ever goes like this, so why did I do that? Oh wait, no, I also watched uh, Ip Man 3. Let's talk about that first. Um, Ip Man 3 was, uh, it's the third <laughs> movie in the Ip Man series that stars um, Donnie Yen as Ip Man. And I was kind of disappointed with it actually because I felt like it kind of recycled a lot of content in terms of the action choreography from the first two movies, especially the second one. I didn't feel like the story was that compelling, but it did kind of pick up in the second half. Um, but I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it that much. Mike Tyson is in it, and he was kind of promoted as like the main antagonist in that movie, but he wasn't. He like is a boss dude who like tells his underlings to do things that affects Ip Man and then at one point they spar and that's just that's it just like spar and not even fight and then he leaves the movie for the rest of the movie um this character there's this side character that rises up to be the kind of surprise main antagonist or not really surprise I'm pretty sure people saw it coming um and he's in the final fight with uh, Eat Man and that fight isn't satisfying, but more than that, his character isn't satisfying. He's not motivating at all, like in his motives. It's not convincing. Um, uh, so, yeah, I didn't like any of the characters in Eat Man in terms of the new characters who came as threats. Uh, but I did like some of the themes. I think every Ip Man movie has a theme. I'm not sure what this one was. Uh, I did know at some point because I read it on Wikipedia, but I don't know now. But um, I did feel like there were some pretty obvious themes in the movie. I really liked this one scene where um, he goes into this elevator with his wife and uh, this guy who was hired to beat him up comes in. He stops the elevator before it closes and then they kind of fight, but like during the whole instigation of the fight, Ip Man is making sure that his wife doesn't get hurt, and then uh, he like freaking the dude until he like is pushed out of the elevator, and then he like closes the elevator, and he presses the button, and his wife is like safe from the danger or whatever. And there's this really cool shot where the wife, you can tell just visually, because throughout the movie up to that point, she's going through this um, little personal arc where she feels like her husband isn't noticing her conflict and her struggles that she goes through with life. And then in that shot right there, you see her as she's like, she's like gasping. She's like, oh no, as the elevator closes and Ip Man's like left there to fight by himself and she's protected because he saved her or whatever. She realizes that he's been fighting all his life too, but in a different way that she knows. And so yeah, it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool moment where she like kind of realizes how cool her husband is technically which is kind of a lame thing to say in terms of how tired that narrative is but I feel like in this movie or not in this movie but in that shot in general it was really well depicted in general for the whole movie I don't think it's that 
too crazy told or too well told of a story, but in that particular shot, just really good direction in that shot, and it was a really uh, poignant moment in my opinion. So yeah, that's Ant-Man 3. Um, I think also during the advertising um, phase of it, they also like talked a lot about how Bruce Lee is supposed to be in it. He's barely in it. <laughs> He's barely in it. He doesn't even, like, Ip Man has a student in that movie. There's this guy who plays one of his students and he kind of like has the role of being his like first mate or like right hand man who like does the shit for his master. But that's not Bruce Lee's character. That could have been Bruce Lee's character, but then they also throw in Bruce Lee, but Bruce Lee doesn't have any role that's like that. His role is just way lamer, and he's in like two scenes, and they're not very important, and um, yeah. So yeah, if you intend to watch Eat Man for Mike Tyson and Bruce Lee, I guess just know that they're not really emphasized in that movie. Um, and I don't know if they have to be. I don't, I'm not saying that they should have been because if they were, the themes that they brought into this movie probably would have conflicted with what they were trying to portray thematically. But I mean, they advertised it, so you gotta call them out on that. Okay, you advertised a bunch of Bruce Lee and Mike Tyson, but they were barely in it, yo! <laughs> All right, so that's E-Man 3. If I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it like an 83, 82, 84 somewhere between B- minus and B average, so yeah. Uh, enjoyed the f second 8-man movie more. Actually, I liked both of the previous ones more probably. If I had to rank them, it'd be 8-man 2, 8-man 1, and then 8-man 3. Maybe. 3 might be better than 1. No, I don't think it is. Nah. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to Skip Trace, and this is starring Jackie Chan, of course, another martial arts legend. Um, probably definitely more so than Donnie Yen as of now, as of 2016. Who knows, Donnie Yen might get bigger. He's pretty darn big though. He's gonna be in Star Wars, yo. So Skip Trace is the newest movie uh, with Jackie Chan. And so it's like another buddy crime solving flick with Jackie Chan having like a Western slash American sidekick. And that's Johnny Knoxville, whoever he plays. I forget the dude of the name he plays. And so yeah, this isn't a good film, but I enjoyed watching it because of reasons. You know, people have biases. It's not a good film. I can't give it like a good score overall. If I had to rate it, I'd give it like C plus just to be objective. But I enjoyed watching it because I feel like I understand somewhat of why Jackie Chan makes films and why he continues to make films and why he continues to make the same types of films he's made for a long while now. So Jackie Chan kind of has this policy on filmmaking or I guess starring in films that I think he's talked about a couple of times now and hinted at. Um, one example is when he was asked to be on The Expendables. They asked him to be in The Expendables. He rejected them because he felt that that film and that film series was just basically pure violence and brute um, action and he wants to make movies with like a somewhat good message. Uh, you can kind of um, notice that in his uh, police story series in which um, the newest one is like pure philosophical and like moral moral <laughs> uh, yeah basically a movie full of philosophy and morals and like a very bare minimum of action. You could kind of argue that's because of his age where he can't really do stunts anymore, but I guess I would counter that with the movie that I just saw with him, Skip Trace, which is way more recent, has like way more action than that movie, and that movie is part of his film series, Police Story, which is pretty legendary for being crazy action in terms of like the best action choreography and not like action every second, but yeah. So yeah, he has this policy which I actually agree with um, for the most part. I'm like, yo, that's cool, um, do your thing. Uh, I probably wouldn't have wanted to see you in The Expendables if it meant that you could make the other stuff that you make, which is way better. But at the same time, I don't know, you just can't help but think um, that he could probably be leaving a better um, OVAR, is that how you pronounce it? Um, a better filmography uh, if he kind of like fine-tuned that policy a bit more. <laughs> like it's good if you don't star in films like The Expendables if they're just gonna be pure action and you get like 10 minutes of screen time or whatever. That time could be better used to making the films that are well better. Um, but I mean when you're like uh, starring in movies with like people like Johnny Knoxville and not just people like Johnny Knoxville but like versions of people like Johnny Knoxville like way past their prime like it's been 
years, I think maybe even decades, since Johnny Knoxville has been um, famous or most famous for his Jackass series and whatnot. Um, so when you're doing that, not only that actually, but Skip Trace is um, trivia here. It's directed by uh, the dude with like the Guinness World Record for the biggest box office bomb. So he's working with actors and directors that are kind of questionable. Of course I'm not saying that like the sales is what determines the movie's worth. So I don't want to like insult that director or anything. Uh, I actually enjoyed how uh, Skip Trace was directed. So I give him props um, for that and um, that whole thing about the box office bomb. I don't know, it's just trivia and it's just kind of a thing. I mean it's on your record I guess so you can't really avoid it. Um, but I'm not judging him completely for that. So yeah, I guess my point here is that uh, when Jackie Chan's like continually doing things with these kinds of um, people, you kind of got a question if he could also be like filtering those kind of movies out to make uh, better movies. But at the same same time, um, this is where I kind of coincided with my thoughts on Skip Trace now is that I can actually kind of understand still how he does buddy cop films with people like Johnny Knoxville because when I watch a movie like that, I can see how he like plugs in. I don't know how much Jackie Chan influenced the actual script and whatnot, but you can like really see how they plug in scenes where they do like a culture immersion. So um, things that you will see in Skip Trace that they did not tell you about if you even heard about the movie at all because it's been pretty darn under the radar um, for a Jackie Chan movie, I guess, is um, so here are the things you'll, you'll see that um, they didn't tell you about. You'll see a slice of Mongolian culture You'll see a mud fight. You'll see Jackie Chan covering Adele. And you'll see a random henchman uh, dab it. Okay, so yeah, those are pretty random things to point out, but I think it kind of makes a case of how like fun the movie can be. And so those movies are really cool in that you can see how he like plugs in those scenes of like cultural immersion in this movie. Um, they hang out with some Mongolians and it's a really fun time. Also in these movies, they also basically end on a really happy note where the good guy wins because he fought for uh, what's right. Jackie Chan's usually like a cop in these movies and he's like just following his police code and whatnot. Um, and so yeah, that's basically uh, how a lot of these movies work. And this one's pretty much the same. It's enjoyable in that um, I don't know, I would live with Jackie Chan movies forever, dude. So yes, when I like realize that those things are in the movies he makes, even though the movies by formula are kind of a disaster for um, financial ruin, I mean tag team in with an actor who's way past his prime and a director who has directed for the box office bomb. Um, that's not the greatest plan I would say, but this movie stands as a testament that you can like still make a fun movie despite um, you know, the failures that those people have had or whatever the uh, superficial reasons why they might not be qualified to make a movie with you or whatever. Overall, I can't rate it really high. It's probably one of the worst movies that I've talked about in this video. I'd give it like a C plus or something, I guess. Oh wait, I already said that, didn't I? Um, but in terms of rewatch value, I think I actually might rewatch this movie someday just because it's part of Jackie Chan's filmography. Uh, then someday, years from now, I'll be marathoning Jackie Chan's filmography, which I personally haven't even seen all of. And I'll be going, yeah, Skip Trace wasn't that bad. Let's watch it again. It's pretty fun. Um, we can have another fun experience. So yeah. Okay, with that, um, I'm done talking about the movies that I've seen for, uh, recently. Uh, the, yeah, so it's 2016, um, there are a lot of movies that I am anticipating, even though a lot haven't come out this year that are really good. I will be back with another vlog about movies because I really love movies, um, and I watch movies until I die, and I guess I'll talk about them until I die too. So here's the movie club. Um, some movies that I'm looking forward to are uh, Warcraft. I haven't seen that yet because I was supposed to watch it in theaters, but it was only in theaters for a month. Can you believe that? Movies these days only screen for a month and then they're out. No, it was less than a month actually. They screened for less than a month and they're out. I mean, in Warcraft's case, it wasn't doing too well um, in the box office here, so maybe that was the reason, but I think that's actually not the case and that happens to a lot of movies. So that's what's happening with the film market. And I've realized that like, the home releases versions of movies are coming out way quicker too. Like, literally like five months or six months after the movies in theaters, which is like not that long at all. Like, it takes me five to six months just to go to a movie theater to see any movie like that's the period that I take so like I just watch them all at home now I'm never going to the movie theaters again or something like that right uh so yeah I'm gonna watch some more movies of course and the ones I'm looking forward to that I haven't seen I haven't seen Warcraft 
Uh, I want to see Jungle Book. I want to see the new Star Trek movie. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a weak year so far, huh? I mean, these are all supposed to be summer blockbusters, but in terms of just like, yo, those are good movies that you should look out for, that's not really the case for any of those. They're just like entertaining. In terms of Warcraft, of course, I have a bias because it's based off a video game that um, I really want to see come to life, but yeah.